This week it emerged that despite months of lobbying from Washington, the UK has decided that it is safe to use Huawei's equipment in its 5G networks. For the US, which has spent months telling allies that Huawei's products could be used by Beijing for spying, this marked a significant diplomatic failure. But it also refocused attention on what some see as a more significant failure, a commercial failure of the US to cultivate a company that can compete with Huawei on a global scale. One of the reasons that American diplomats have found it so hard to persuade allies not to use the Chinese company's equipment is that there aren't many alternatives, and none of them is American. Nokia and Ericsson, the European companies, are the two biggest competitors to Huawei, but neither of them has the market scale or can provide products as quickly and as cheaply as Huawei can. Some in the US blame this on the market liberalization that took place here in the 1990s, which they say created a fragmented marketplace where several new telecoms operators launched and then failed, and no one technology took hold. They contrast this with the situation in Europe, for example, where all the carriers agreed to use GSM, which then became the global standard. The hand-wringing in Washington has become so intense that some have suggested, even in the Republican Party, that the government should take over the running of the American 5G networks and help develop new products to do so. So far, Donald Trump has not gone for such a suggestion. But if other countries follow the UK's example, I would expect the angst in Washington to become even more acute.